Welcome to the Funkalyzer series where I'm trying to build a device that is used to damper the sound of the bass guitar. But not a regular boring bass guitar. For this to happen you need a bass that is split with marbles. And for the marbles to actuate in, uh, with the bass you need a marble machine. And if it is the second time you design to build a marble machine you probably call it MMX. Maybe it's too specific but what can I say I want Martin Bolin to be in a world tour. A lot has happened since the last video, let me take you up to date. First, Martin and the guys in the Discord server opened a channel for the Funkalyzer. There is a discussion there about the device, and I'd like to thank all those who shared ideas and sketches, you are all awesome. Having the chance to talk with real engineers about an engineering problem is invaluable for me. So if you like to share your own ideas, just get in, you are also welcomed. There is a link in the description below. Right after the release of the last video, I was struck by a lightning. Um, this device I'm trying to build has been used in pianos for centuries. So I started some research. There are several types of pedals for uh, different types of purposes. For our case, two are the more likely. The first one is the damper or sustain pedal, which uh, stops the sound of the notes at will. The second is uh, more used in upright pianos and it's called the practice pedal. When you actuate this pedal, what it does in the piano is that it can place a felt between the hammer and the string, um, making a very opaque sound. So I call a friend that I knew has a friend that actually repairs and builds pianos. The conversations that I had with him just opened my mind. So thank you Wilbur for sharing your wisdom with me. I learned a lot about materials and techniques and so on. Let's resume what are the main problems of the Funkalyzer and how to solve them. The first and most important is that the device tends to tune the notes. In MMX language, this is critical failure. It's just not acceptable. But why does it happen when the string is cut right in the middle of the scissor? Well, you really have to push the device hard to create the dampening effect. And that tension makes the string to get out of tune. Because the strings in the bass have a low tension, and this is new for me. I always thought that the tension of the strings in a guitar or bass is enormous. But compared with the strings in a piano, they are like rubber bands. In an optimal scenario, all of this will work. but. Because of the low string tension, the system is unstable. We have to do it better. The second problem is that the damper effect is not strong enough. This is going to be tricky because on a piano several groups of notes have different dampers to have the correct effect. But in a bass guitar a single string plays a lot of notes. So some compromise is needed. To get a better dampening effect, I bought some specific material used for pianos. Because if it is proven that it works on pianos, so it has to do on a bass, right? Let's talk about the changes in the design. So here is our uh, redesign of the Funkalyzer. I get rid of the bottom lip because it was kind of annoying to mount and unmount it. Basically, this gear here is now symmetrical. Um, this uh, this hole for the screws was uh, down here. Now it's uh, in the upper part, and we only have uh, one lip, which is uh, this big uh, part of here, and four felts are going to be made with a new material, which I hope works better for the for the case. No gross bars, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, the system is um, more easy, there are m uh, less components. I'm going to build this and uh, make some tests, and, and hopefully this is going to work like a charm.
Before we continue with the testing, why don't you like and subscribe? Or even better, check out our Instagram page. <laughs> Probably not the best sound, but good enough for what we are trying to do. So. Let's do it. It works. It mutes the strings <laughs> maybe too much. So, dumping in effect, correct. Let's check it out the, the tuning. Let's open the device. Let's close it. Hmm. This is not too bad, but this is way too much. This is perfect. This is also good. A and G has a perfect tune, but uh, A and D tend to untune the string. My assumption is that uh, because of the strings has a radius and this is completely flat, A and G um, has a lower pressure than A and D. So as the pressure is higher here, what is actually happening is that the note, instead of starting right in the saddle, it's starting to sound right here. The good news is that we have room to improve because the felt is all this long. So I can probably shorten these two felts a little bit to have a perfect pitch. So I'm going to do this right now. Back to testing mode. Let's open it. Close it. Right there. So what we have now is a proof of concept. We have to develop this a little bit more to have uh, the final device. Three features are needed here. First, an on and off mechanism. If uh, right now the device stays in position, it's just because a happy coincidence. The gears has a high friction and that helps the device to stay in place. But in the real object, I'd like to have a smooth feeling with something that locks the device both in on or off position. In second place, I need a height adjustment for the felts once per string to fine tune the pressure of the felts against the string. And third, we need the ability to change the length 
of the felts but uh, this is probably the most easier one because you can always remove the felt and cut it or make it another one longer this is all for now hopefully the next video is going to be the last one of this series and i'd like to build the real thing in that video so hope to see you next time bye